Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Great to see all of you this morning. A welcome to all of you who are visiting this morning with family and friends. So glad you have joined us, and we pray you will be blessed in your time with us. A special welcome also to those who are watching on Facebook. We're glad you could join us this morning as well. Just a couple of brief announcements today. You can see everything that's going on at our Saviors in our bulletin and grab and go. I did want to highlight that next Sunday, um, last Sunday of the month, we take a special noisy offering. And next week, that noisy offering will go to Numa's house. And then I just want to remind everyone to please hold all of those on our prayer list in prayer. Uh, we do remember this week the family of Sharon Larson, whose funeral was here Monday, the family of Conrad Trapp, whose funeral was yesterday, and we remember today, too, the family of Dean Wegner. Dean is Denny's son, and Dean passed away this past week. Those are the announcements I have, so please stand as we begin with our resurrection announcement. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the morning sun of that first Easter, Jesus' followers saw an open and empty tomb, the first glimpse of a new world changed and saved by God's love. Open our eyes, Lord, that we might see that same glory and be filled with faith. They heard the angels proclaim, Why do you seek the living among the dead? They were filled with wonder and joy as they saw their Lord and knew that death had been defeated. Open our hearts that we might be filled with peace and joy of your everlasting love. They ran and told others what they had seen and heard. Open our mouths that we might shout. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. We sing Jesus Christ is risen today.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The psalm for today is Psalm 118, verses 1 to 2 and 14 to 24. We will read the psalm responsively. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. 
Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord it has been done. It is marvelous and in our lives. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The reading for today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 19 to 26. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom of God to the Father after he's destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all of his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Word of God, word of life. Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 24. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week at early dawn, the women came to the tomb taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were, t the women were terrified and bowed their faces to gr the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and kids, come on up.
Come on up. I'm so glad to see all of you today. I saw some of you here yesterday looking for Easter eggs. Were you here? Good. Come on up and have a seat. There's room for everybody. Oh, no. Somebody has a broken arm. So I have like a really big Easter egg today. So what do you suppose could fit into such a big Easter egg? I mean, this isn't your normal egg that we found yesterday. This is a really big one. Anyone have any ideas what could be in here to fill this big egg? A butterfly. That would be cool if there were a butterfly. What else could be in here? Candy. I mean, we could get a lot of candy in this big egg. And somebody told me they got money in their egg. We could get a lot of money in this egg, couldn't we? Yeah. So, should we take a look and see what's in this egg? Look. What's in there? Nothing. Nothing, because you know what? Nothing in that room, in this egg, is the good news of Easter. When the disciples went to the tomb, when the women first and then the disciples went to the tomb where they had buried Jesus, what they discovered was the tomb was empty just like this egg. And that's good news because you know what that means? Jesus is alive. Jesus rose from the dead. Not even death could keep him down. So an empty tomb on Easter, that's good news for all of us every day. So let's have a prayer together, and you can repeat after me. Dear Lord, thank you for rising from the grave. Help us to be joyful and give thanks for the gift of Easter. Amen. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So Easter is probably the most joyful day of the church year. It is a celebration today as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, a lot of us have heard this story every year since we've been born. It's very familiar to us. But I wonder what our reaction would have been if we had been there that very first Easter morning. Would we have been perplexed like the women at the grave or consider it an idle tale like the apostles? What would it have been like to have been one of those early followers? They'd followed Jesus during all of his ministry. They put all of their hope and faith in him to save them, only to watch him then die on a cross like a common criminal. I mean, would they have lost hope? Would we have lost hope if we were there in that time for anything to be different? But I wonder if maybe our reactions today could be very similar to those very first people on Easter. I mean, what is our reaction when we hear the good news today? Have we heard this message so often that we have forgotten its significance and power and hope? Do we find ourselves looking for life among the dead? The good news of Easter is that the resurrection is for those who are perplexed or think it's an idle tale. The resurrection is for those who have lost hope. The resurrection is is for those who keep looking for the living among the dead. The resurrection is for those who have always believed and had faith and today need a reminder of the power of the resurrection. The resurrection is for all of us. Whatever condition we find ourselves in today and wherever we are on our journey in faith. The resurrection is for those who are perplexed and wonder if the resurrection is an idle tale. Because if that's you, you aren't alone. Jesus' disciples struggled to believe it. Peter decided, I need to check this out for myself to see if it's true. And when he runs and looks and he sees an empty tomb, he's amazed. And yet, in the next chapter of Luke, it's like he never had seen that because the disciples are in a room and they're shocked when Jesus enters. 
the disciples struggled to believe. And maybe some of you do too, because really the magnitude of what the resurrection means, that when God raised Jesus from the dead, that God was overthrowing death and sin and all that oppresses us, when God was declaring once and for all that life is more powerful than death, I mean, that can seem almost impossible. But know that the disciples, in being perplexed and asking questions, I think they're reminding us that the questions we have, they actually aren't the opposite of faith. That questions can be essential ingredients in our faith. Questions help us deepen our faith. Faith isn't knowledge. Faith, we are reminded of in Hebrews, is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. But remember what happened on that first Easter when the women and the disciples heard the impossible. They didn't run away. Peter, in fact, ran to the tomb. He ran to Jesus. And I think when we have our questions or doubts or we're angry at God about something, I think we have a tendency to run away, thinking if we don't have the perfect faith, that God and maybe the church just doesn't want us. But we learn something different today. When we have those times, Jesus meets us where we are, and so we should keep coming here. We should keep seeking Jesus because the resurrection is for those who are perplexed. The resurrection is for those who have lost hope and see no possibility of life being any different. And so maybe you find yourselves looking for life among the dead. But see, we don't have to cling to what is draining us, what is draining life from us, when actually new life is possible. I mean, life is hard sometimes. We worry, we're anxious, bad things happen. We think our mistakes have doomed us, and so we lose hope. And then we end up looking for life where it isn't found. You know, we maybe become controlling. We look for life in money, in success, in perfection or busyness. We don't let go of ideas that no longer work for us because change is difficult. We so want to belong that sometimes we stay in places and situations that cause us to lose ourselves and who we really are. Sometimes it's just easier to look for life among the dead, even when it's draining us, instead of seeing what is possible with God. And so we too lose hope that anything can be any different. Now I know sometimes seeing or feeling hope, it is difficult. When you're facing serious illness, when your grief is overwhelming, sometimes it's hard to find hope. But what the resurrection means is that there's always hope, that new life can come from what looks like sure and certain death and darkness. We can leave our heartache, our fears, our mistakes, our perfectionism, all of that at the cross. We can leave living a lie on a cross. And we can know that even when death is right in front of us, that it won't be the end. Resurrection is promised, even when it's difficult. And that gives us hope. In the meantime, as we navigate life's difficulties, the times where maybe we lose hope, and maybe, we, maybe what we need to do then is to look for the many resurrections. You know, look for the signs of life around you and find hope because they are there look for the places where you see light you see jesus took all of our burdens on good friday took them to the cross and god said that even out of that out of sure death and darkness there is new life there is hope because the tomb is empty the resurrection is for those who have lost hope the resurrection is for those who have always accepted the resurrection as being true and have strong faith and have always believed. And so on Easter, maybe what God is nudging you or doing is asking us to wonder, where is God breaking into our lives right now with something new? 
And then, are we listening? Are we seeing? Are we noticing all the ways God is at work in our lives and the world and the ways that God is then calling us to take a leap of faith and answer maybe some of those nudges we've been feeling that is really God working in us, you know? Things like feeling nudged to be a mentor or to join or lead a Bible study or to deepen your faith with devotions, to visit someone who is alone, to go on a mission trip, to give of your time and talent more generously, to invite someone to church, to be bold in your faith. But how is God breaking into your life in leading you into something new? Have the courage to open your heart and trust that God is at work, working something new in you. The resurrection is for those who have always believed and have faith. Resurrection faith, it came slow to the women and to the disciples, but when it did, it changed everything. You know, the women remembered after some urging of what Jesus had taught them. The disciples, in the end, saw Jesus for themselves, and they were changed. We are too. Our faith in God is a journey, and we stumble on our journeys. But whether we are slow to faith or we have complete faith, Easter is the good news, that death doesn't have the final word. The promise of Easter is that love and life are stronger than fear and death, that anything is possible with God. And there's more good news. There is the promise that we can expect to see those we've loved and lost again. The journey of faith that you're on, that matters to God. And God walks with you, and longs to bring light and new life into your life wherever you find yourself this morning. There is hope for the resurrection says that with God, anything is possible because the tomb is empty. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Amen. Please stand as we sing our hymn of the day. Now all the vault of heaven resounds.
On this day of resurrection joy, let us offer our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and the world. Renewing God, the good news of your resurrection changed the world. Give church leaders and all the baptized the same excitement as the women at the tomb and inspire us to share your abundant life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustaining God, your creation abounds with signs of new life in budding trees and newborn creatures. Provide fertile soil, ample sunlight, and nourishing rain for the growth of plants and provide farmers with a plentiful harvest. Lord, in your mercy, Encouraging God, you do a new thing among us. We pray for those gripped by fear and anxiety or who suffer in any way. Bring your healing presence, especially to Merle, Audrey, Russ, Dixie, Brad, Sharon, Joyce, Ken, Anne, Kane, McKenna, Dave, Tom, George, Carol, Keith, Sharon, Wally, Dean, and those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Comfort those who grieve, especially the family of Sharon Larson, the family of Conrad Trapp, and the family of Dean Wagner. Lord, in your mercy. Surprising God, you offer endless ways for us to delight in your grace. Give this community of faith a sense of joy and wonder in exploring new avenues of faith formation, worship, and discipleship. Help us to see the many resurrections all around us. Lord, in your mercy. We offer to you these petitions and those we carry in our hearts, trusting in your abundant and ever-present mercy. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us share a word or a sign of peace to one another. seated as they collect the offering.
Please stand as they bring the offering forward. Let us pray together. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ our light, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Give to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The meal is ready. Christ is the host. Come as you are. All are welcome. You may be seated, and the ushers will direct you, and will gather around the altar. <laughs> 